Hi, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to review these Princeton brushes. They are the Snap Line by Princeton, and these are for watercolor and acrylics. And the reason I picked them up at the store the other night was because they were cheap. They were $7.99 for the pack of three. I actually used a coupon, so I got it for like, you know, $4.50. And um, they're the ideal sizes for a beginner watercolorist. It's the kind of the sizes that I tend to use the most, a three quarter inch angular, a number 10 round, and the number eight filbert, which I have just kind of started using filberts in my watercolor work, but they are great for doing branches and things like that. So I haven't even opened these yet. I wanted to do this all on the video. And um, these were found, I think this is kind of a new line. Um, I saw it at AC Moore for the first time. And when you get them, you'll notice your round will have this like little collar on there. You want to take it off and discard it. You could save it and use it in a craft project, but don't put it back on your brush because chances are you'll end up damaging your bristles. Now you'll also notice that your bristles are kind of stiff. They have some sizing on them. So the first thing you want to do is uh, rinse off your brushes to remove that sizing. Okay, that's just how they kind of protect your brushes and make them look good in their packaging. So rinse them off really well. It's just kind of like a water-based glue on there or gelatin or something. And these seem to be keeping their shape really well after the sizing comes off. That's not always the case. A uh, Princeton brush makes a decent brush, so I was fairly certain these brushes would pr be pretty decent. All right, so here we look at the brushes, and they seem to have a nice spring, like they snap back when I pull my finger over the bristles. See, they have a good snap. Um, I feel like they have a nice amount of bristles in here. The, this wash may be a little bit, may have a bit fewer bristles than the typical um, three-quarter inch wash. We'll compare it to my Aqualons that I use a lot in a minute. And the number eight seems to, uh, the number 10 round seems to be really nice too. All right, so let's do some of my favorite techniques that um, I like to use these brushes for, or these types of brushes. One would be, uh, first would be side loading, or actually first would be a wet into wet wash. So let me just wet an area here. And, you know, I feel like this brush is bringing over a good amount of water. So that's good, because that's what you want in a watercolor brush. You want it to be able to hold a good amount of water. So I'll just grab a few colors from my palette and do a uh, do a wet into wet wash. Yeah, I seem to have a decent control with this. I'm pretty pleased with this. I'll throw another color in there just to complete the wash. I feel like this is um, working with the paints well. Okay, my other favorite technique for these um, angular brushes would be side loading. So let me just um, get out a, get some color in my palette there. Okay, so for side loading, we clean our brush off and we either squeeze out additional water with our fingers or we blot it on a tissue. And then you can take the point, and this is a little easier to do with an angular than a flat, so that's why I picked this set because it had the angular, is you just kind of get that, that edge, the long tip, you get the edge in your paint and then you get that nice side load. And that worked really well, actually. And I could even work over it and get a nice soft blend. All right, so this is great for side loading. Um, I'm really happy with this brush. Now I can compare it with the um, Aqualon, because I have one right here. I think the Aqualon might have a little bit more for bristles in there. Um, you know, when you get a less expensive brush, they you know may not have as many hairs in the brush, but, but I did notice there was no hairs being deposited in my wash, which is which is really good. So there, yep, you know, they, they work very, very similar. So yeah, I definitely think it's a decent um, substitute. Now the only thing that I want to make a note of is that these are wooden handles, so you don't want to go leaving them in the water. That's a bad habit that I have. And also um, the ends of the brushes, the Aqualons, you have the scraper ends. So if I wanted to go in and, you know, scrape, this doesn't have that end, but you can always use my credit card scraper tool, you know, just a piece of cut up credit card for that technique. So just keep that in mind, they don't have the scraper ends. All right, another, uh, something I like to do with, there's a couple things I like to do with round brushes. I like a big fat round that comes to a point because if I work um, on the tip of the brush, you know, like that, I can get a nice fine line, but if I press, I can get a thicker line. Okay, so, you know, that's why I like to have a big round brush. The other technique I like with a round brush that I don't do too much in the beginner tutorials is um, I like to do a gradient, a, a nice uh, solid wash. So what you do is you kind of make a bead of water. You mix up your color. You make sure you have enough color to do your wash on your palette. And then you load your color into that bead. Okay. And you get that bead of color really saturated. And then you just, you tilt your paper and you carry down your color. And as that bead of color starts to get 
starts to dry up, you add more color just to the bead, and then you keep working it down. And that's really good with these these large uh, wash brushes. So this would be when you want a really large, flat area of color. And you can go until you run out of color, or if you uh, still have color in there when you're done, you can just wipe your clean, dry your brush off, and then just suck up the extra color. But we'll just go and we'll just use this up just to show you that technique. This isn't one that I do very often, but it's a great one to know. No, it's a uh, blah, blah, blah. ha. This is early. I'm not even on my second cup of coffee yet. Um, this is a great technique to know because it's great for when you want a nice, flat, rich area of color. All right, so I'm happy with that round brush too. So they're two, two out of three. Two out of three are working great. Not bad for $7.99, honestly. Uh, my first um, half, my I got my first watercolor brushes when I was seven. I got two, a number six round and a half inch flat. The half inch flat was $20. I still have that brush. It still works great. It's in my brush box. And uh, and the number six round, which doesn't didn't really have a good point on it. Um, I think that was like $6. But it's, you know, quality brushes are so much cheaper now than they ever used to be when I was a kid. All right, so now uh, let's just look at the filbert. One thing that's kind of nice about the filbert is you kind of have the, uh, the, you have the ability of a round brush, but you also have the um, wash capabilities of a flat brush. So you, you kind of, it's almost like you have two brushes in one, which is um, kind of cool. I would tend to use filberts more in oil painting personally, but, um, but I think they're also really nice for painting really natural like branches. So let me get some, I hope I got black. How'd that happen? I must have reorg. I think I put my uh, pans in my palette. I dropped it and I put them in the wrong order, so I thought I was going after some burnt number. All right, so if I was going to do a branch, I might start like by the tree and kind of use the filbert like this, pressing down, but then I might turn it, kind of wiggle it to get some barkiness, and I can go on the edge and get some tiny branches, just kind of wiggle it, and it's really good for making like ununiform branches. See? And then you could even take your... Um, Take your filbert and you could grab a little bit of pink or red or something like that and you could just kind of dab on some cherry blossoms or whatever you want, you know, whatever, sakuras or I'm not even really, I'm just playing here, but you know, you could really get a lot done with these few brushes. So these were $7.99, the Snap brushes from Princeton Brush Company. I bought them at AC Moore. They do offer them open stock or in uh, sets. And let me see if there's a number on this. This is uh, 9650 set-1. That's what's on the package. If you uh, want to find that exact one, they also offer long handle brushes for acrylic and oil painting at the easel, um, as well as under, uh, open stock brushes. I think they start at like $2.99 and go up. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to run sales on these often, but I think they're a great buy. Um, and they get my thumbs up. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. I'm going to cut it short because I get the water pump going and it's very loud. Uh, I want to thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy crafting.